All right, let's play this game. I want you guys to grab your shoe shoes. game. We'll be playing this at the wedding. <laughs> mm -hmm. Practice. So this is a little bit. Um, I just need one. I barely wore them. This is not. <laughs> this is not like the <laughs> stuff that's going to be said at the wedding. Right? Oh yeah, of course. Who, no, who, I was kidding. Who's a better cook? I don't care about that shit. We already know Ashley. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> just punched my ring. Ow, I elbowed your ring. Okay, are you guys ready? So the premise of the game, you guys understand, right? Like, <gasps> if it's what? It's okay. If it's um, if you think the answer of the question is your spouse, you raise your spouse's shoe, and if you think the answer to the question is you, you raise your shoe. Yes. Okay, we're yes. good with that. Yes. Okay, so, and I don't want you guys to look at each other. So this Ashley, going to be very one sided. Maybe it's all be Ashley. Maybe you should uh, face me a little bit. So these. Give it. I'll put it in between my legs. It's fine. I'll hold it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, and if you're not watching the YouTube video, watch the YouTube video so you you'll can get the full effect. Get the yeah, full interaction. Get okay. Wait, so if I think the answer is Ashley, I raise Ashley's shoe. If I think it's my, okay. There's no right or wrong answers. It's what you yes, feel. I don't say there's always a right answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. Don't let her lie to you. No. <laughs> Choose life. Okay. So first question. Quick responses to. Okay. Don't think about it too okay. much. It's not that in I'm depth. Scared. <laughs> Who's the more toxic one? <laughs> Quick responses, people. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Matt's like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Um, who's the first one to apologize? Okay. All right. Always the guy. That's bullshit. That's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Sorry. If you like a, if you like to be happy, <laughs> I've gotten better. You have. <laughs> Give me something. Okay. Who wears the pants? <laughs> we already know it's backwards. Oh, you still picking? Yeah. Did he pick? Okay. It? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Too late. You already picked. <laughs> so you think you wear the pants? How? Explain. No, you don't get. This is in what, who like wears the though? pants in your relationship. Who wears the pants? Yeah, not her. Oh, okay, yep, that's what I thought. Like I said, I like I like, I like to be happy. <laughs> I don't like to fight. This is supposed to be like real, no. truthful, not about not if you can sleep with your eyes closed tonight. <laughs> um, who wants who wants some more kids? Okay, Matt, what's your like golden? number for kids like if you had to pick this is the person perfect number like two or three two or three yeah yours is six it was i've went down it's like four because i realized getting older like six is absolutely ridiculous r.i.p to her hoo-ha <laughs> um <laughs> um <laughs> it was the, the um excuse us who usually starts the arguments? This is feeling really Ashley heavy. Just I'm honest. Okay. <laughs> I, I love that for you. Um, I do. I know it. It's fine. I'm trying to be better about it. Who was in more relationships prior? Ooh, that's an interesting one. They said Matthew. How many relationships have you been in, Matthew? Do you more have? <laughs> I got a foot I can spare. <laughs> Hold on. 25. No, I'm just kidding. The fact that Look. you're having to be like, okay, hold on, I need it. It's been a long time. He's not that old. Shut up. Four? Like actual serious ones? Okay. That four. last you more than like a month. Yeah, yeah. Okay. four. Four. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Just one over you then. Not like Not super crazy amount over. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Um, hmm. Who would be a better stay at home person? Ashley? I, yeah. You think so? You think you would still be productive? Although I would love to be a stay at home. I, dad. Yeah, I knew that. That's why I was like, uh, um, yeah, because we all know I can't sit still. 
Okay. So I feel like I can like talk. Your time would be like, you think it would, your time just would be, be productive? Like, I don't know, like laying on the couch all day watching TV or something. I would be like having to move, move. around. Yeah. So I'd like clean or I don't know. Okay. Um, all right. That's. That's it for those. Those okay. are the hot seat ones. Okay. Um, I do have a couple more of just like little like fun ones. Okay. If you guys can move anywhere, where would it be? Oh, I'm getting. Um, I knew that's what you were doing. Are we you say, say shoes no, you don't need them anymore. You you say home, but I feel like you like have other places in mind too. She would like a vacation home there. I yeah. I ideally. I. I don't necessarily have a specific place in mind, just somewhere that has the seasons. That's okay. all my, like, thing is, really, because like, it's just too hot here 24-7. So I just want something that's got the cooler spring, the fall, and then a little bit of snow. Like, I don't need to live in, like, the freaking... Antarctica yeah. or something? Yeah. Like, that's a little much. But, like, I also don't like living in the heat 24-7, so I feel like as long as it's seasonal... I'll take it. It'll be okay. What about you, Matthew? If you had like a perfect, like a perfect place, perfect state, does it have to be like a city particularly? Yeah. I feel like I know what you're gonna say. It'd probably be Tennessee. That's good. Just because it's not 105 degrees in September, which is nice. But mainly also because when my uncle lived there. He lived, yeah, it, he had like 13 acres on the side of a mountain, and it was just beautiful. Like, yeah. I went up there, saw all the seasons, you can do whatever the hell you want, because you have all of that land. Mm -hmm. And it's just nice. I mean, it's quiet. Everyone's generally pretty friendly. Yeah. So, and you're an hour from a few major cities. Um, going off of, like, where you would want to live, what is your, like, dream job? If you could pick anything, do anything, be anything, what would you be? An astronaut. An astronaut? No. <laughs> You're a liar. Uh, I feel like you're afraid of heights. I want to jump out of a plane so oh, bad. Oh, hell no. You're crazy. Okay. No, I'm not afraid of heights. I mean, if you put me on top of a building and tell me to look over, I'm not going to do it, but I'll jump out yeah. of a plane. Can you imagine space? Yeah. Anyways, real dream job. You Thank just you. float, though. Um dream job I like what I do now just something along the lines of what I do now but maybe like own my own shop or something like that but like not but like a nice like high end shop or something like a little like that. more in your control yeah so. not like a bunch of busy work no okay. Ashley what's your dream job do we have four hours no I'm kidding I don't know if I have a dream job currently. Okay. Like, I'm very back and forth right now, and I have no idea what I'm going to do. So it's like, I don't know if I could say I had. There's not anything, like, in your head that you envision or, like, a type of job. It doesn't have to be, like, a specific job, but, like, something that you're like, oh, yeah, I would definitely want to do X, Y, Z. I mean... For the longest, I wanted to be in fashion. Okay. Like, either if it was design or, like, model or something like that. Like, I wanted to be in, like, this. But then I also like the fact of, like, styling it. Like, I wanted to do that for the longest. And it's only recently that I'm like, okay, that's not. Like, that's too difficult to try and get in. And you have to get in while you're younger and stuff like that. And you have to know somebody and all of that. So it's like, that's not something that I would think is, like, a dream job now. Mm -hmm. cause, so I don't know. Do you guys wish you would have either pushed the wedding out or moved it earlier? If anything, I would have moved it earlier. Yeah. I, well, it was supposed to be like a week earlier, but... No, like I'm, I would have made it last December. If, like oh, either yeah, December yeah. of 2023 or December of 2024. I would have made it of 2022. Oh, gotcha, like, gotcha. Yeah. The year before. Yeah, I would have made mm -hmm. it just a year engagement had the wedding and been done like if money wasn't an option yeah, yeah. 22, no i was gonna say if year. money wasn't an option yeah last yeah, year yeah it for would sure. definitely been last year so why would you have moved it up what's the like what in well, your head is like i think there's multiple things i one i think my style has changed a tiny bit 
and not in anything like major that's really affecting the wedding too much but there are things that I have bought and been like damn it I would kind of not buy that today for whatever it was like not really in like decor not in the venue not anything like that well the venue hasn't been booked that long but just some stuff that I bought out of excitement I feel like now I'm like I should have waited a little bit or Mm -hmm. and it wasn't anything that I needed right then I just got excited and wanted to buy because we were engaged but and also just like I wouldn't have had so long with everyone given like opinions so I feel like it would have maybe helped with like oh, stress on our been, like, over and done with. yeah and it would have helped i think with stress on our relationship because the wedding has put a lot of stress on it with like people's For, opinions like, the and then year. like we fight over like the dumbest th- or not fight that's the wrong word like little arguments over like the dumbest yeah. things and i just feel like it's because they're being dragged out and you know i'll be like oh we have to do this and then i'm like it's, it's not even due for like another two months and then it's mm-hmm. like the two months come and i'm like oh we never did it like our wedding worksheet is due on friday and it's still halfway done because we were putting off and putting off and putting off so I feel like that would be the only reason because everything that I bought I probably would have used and then like it would just be over with Mm -hmm. we would have done it decisions would have been made there would have been no back and forth or like it probably would have been a little bit more stressful because of like decisions would have had to be made immediately but I think it would have benefited us because now we sit with decisions or you know other people are like oh well what if you changed it to this and it's like no I'm just thinking about it, you know, mm-hmm. that, so yeah. I feel like that's why I would have made it earlier. It's a lot of room for, like, people's change. opinions and change, and you guys, like, having so much time to think about it, it goes back and forth. I mean, it came in handy, because payment plans, but, yeah. like, that came in handy. I feel like, I mean, if anything, forwards, mm-hmm. like, obviously, if money wasn't an option, mm-hmm. um, just, it still would have been a year and four still, months. Yeah, it still yeah. would have been over a year. Um, it's just like kind of like what you said, like with it being, you know, crossing age like two, almost two and a half years before the wedding, and then we basically been planning the wedding most of that time. Like whether I mean we got engaged and then shortly after we were searching for venues, not. I mean, constantly it did, but it, it was like it took out a little bit like you know when you first get engaged and you're in like your little bubble, you don't know but like mm-hmm. when you're in like your little happy bubble and you're like oh, okay let's start planning it was like i couldn't right away yeah so it was like oh well i have to wait because i can't really do anything and but then it was like oh no i'm behind yeah it, like went from one extreme to the other yeah i mean I feel like weddings the, are like a, a hurry up and wait and then it's like everything at one time. Like there's no yeah. really in between. There's like hurry up, book everything to wait mm-hmm. because it takes so long. And then it's like at a certain point, like what you guys are at now, it's like a downpour of like constant, like every couple weeks you're having check-ins and this and mm-hmm. that and you're finalizing everything for your big mm-hmm. day. Well, it's kind of like the same with like the payments and everything. It was like at the beginning, booked everything. And then there was kind of, it kind of calmed down for a bit and there wasn't much. And then now it's like, everything has to be paid. Yeah. It's very last minute, which I think is wild, but Mm -hmm. as a very last minute, like industry. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely would have done it last year if I had to change it. Yeah. If we were able. Did you guys hold off only financial reasons or because of other like Uh, opinions or anything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, just... Finance. We just knew, like, I wasn't full time yet. Mm-hmm. I've only been full time for a year now, and so we couldn't do it just off of one salary. Like, it just wouldn't have been, especially out of state and stuff like that. We've had to compromise on too much, and I feel like a wedding is one thing. If you want something, you shouldn't have to compromise. Okay. Like, so I, we would have had to. We probably wouldn't be doing destination. We wouldn't be having a lot. We probably would have if we were had to do it last year on like our current or like. How much money we had, we would have literally probably gone to the courthouse and then had a party after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, it would have been way less of what we really want. Like, you know, I mean, like, it would have just been less of everything, so. Mm -hmm. Would you change anything? Because now you're at, like, that ending point. Like, you guys are locked in. There's Mm -hmm. nothing that you can really do, change, or anything like that. All your contracts have been signed, Mm -hmm. pretty much. Is there anything that you would change about your wedding looking at it now like you mean like venue wise and vendor wise yeah. or just like just anything, anything like about the whole process yeah um, anything that you would change that is going to pertain to your wedding day venue 
anything. Don't make rash decisions when you book people. Think things through. Do the math. Yeah, that. Because but what I you want. Like picking the vendors, I probably would have been more selective mm-hmm. and maybe did more research on who I picked instead of like, oh yeah, I like you, done. And like, I mean, sure, I read the contracts and stuff like that. Like, I don't read, you know, you don't read the terms and conditions, but I read every single letter of every single contract we ever signed for this, but... I would say I'd be more picky about vendors because mm-hmm. we've had to switch one and I've already considered switching another one. But I feel like that and then I feel like that's really it because the date would have been the same. I mean, the location. Oh, sorry. The, You're fine. I can hold it. Oh, the location probably would have been the same. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like all of that, I wouldn't change too much of anything else. Just... Mm-mm. Maybe you don't jump in to buy things right away because I bought some stuff on like a Black Friday sale. And I mean, it was good. It was a good idea. Yeah. I was saving money because when this Black Friday comes, it's like the week before our wedding. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I'm not going to get another one. I may as well do it. And I mean, the stuff was great and like I'm going to use it, but it's just like style changed a little bit. And I'm like, mm, maybe I should have waited just a little bit. Like, I don't know. Because now it's like I. Like, I bought something, and I was trying to get something to match it, and now I've waited so long, I can't. Mm. And I'm like... So, it's, like, stuff like that. I mean, I can still use it. It's not a big deal, but I just feel like I should have waited for some things that I was just, like, overly excited to do. Yeah. But I feel like we did pretty good on most of it. We did think things through for the most part. Yeah, after we made that one decision, Mm -hmm. we were like, all right, we kind of stopped and really thought, like, crunch numbers and see what made the most sense. I think another thing, maybe I would have been a little bit harder on our guest list. Like, we, you know, like we slimmed down our guest list a decent mm-hmm. amount when we first made it because we just like put everybody down and then we were like, okay, there you we know. go. I feel like I would have even done it harder than I did. Like we, you know, like we were like, okay, justifying, justifying this reason, this reason, this reason. But I feel like there's just some that I probably would have been maybe a little bit more harder with and maybe other people a little bit more lenient like either or i mm-hmm. feel like i would have thought we did it very not quickly i wouldn't say but we went through it probably like four or five times is, until like we got the one final of the list other things about it being further away as stuff has changed and because of my family living overseas we had to get our guest list done pretty quickly mm-hmm. so i feel like yeah cuz we sent out the save the dates last october a year and four months out mm-hmm. so i feel like i probably would have waited in done it closer to go down it because people change things change you know people come and go and so i feel like i would have maybe done that too but mm-hmm. but besides that i think that's it everything's kind of good so far, yeah I know of. do you guys feel like you've stayed pretty steady on your budget no <laughs> we raised it once and we just did the math the other day and it's went up again okay it's it doubled since like our original budget has no doubled. So what would be your suggestion for like couples that are going like starting the like the planning process? You said like vendors is a big thing. What about like your budget being realistic? Like what should people look for? How do you plan for something like that? I feel elope and go on a nice honeymoon. Okay. You still said you wouldn't do that. So no. I wouldn't. I feel like But a recommendation to other people. <laughs> I I think one of the best things I did was get the credit card because... Oh, yeah, that was a good idea. Instead of, like, I didn't put myself in debt. I was responsible with it. So if you are going to do that, obviously, be responsible. But I got the card that did the travel points. So it was, like, we can, we're trying to get the honeymoon for basically free because you can use your points to fly. And I got one that offered a really good promotion if you spent so much within a certain... I think it was if you spent 4000 in the first 90 days... You got so many points and we had to make a bunch of purchases so it was easily done and so i think that was one of the good things that we could do but it was also dangerous because you just swipe it and then when the bill comes in we were saving for it and paying it off and then we didn't realize how much had been spent till you add it up so i think i don't have advice for staying on budget because i didn't but i think the biggest part is the venue because that's the biggest chunk of money like that's why we had to raise our budget we were like this is already half the budget we can't spend like we need more for dresses decor headcount food like all like all of that wasn't taken into consideration so i think 
finding the venue and basing your budget off of the venue price is what I would give advice for because that's why we had to raise ours because I was like, there's no way mm-hmm. we can plan a wedding on that amount of money. Yeah. But the wedding credit card was the best thing I ever did because it was less scary when, because the venues, they don't give you a lot of notice. Like I get like a week, maybe, and I get paid monthly. So that's not enough notice for me to be told two and a half grand is being whapped out of your bank account. And I'm like, okay, where? So like I had the wedding credit card and then you have time to move money or pay it or whatever. And I feel like that was, I mean, we saved pretty hard for it too, but hence why it was a two year engagement, but I feel like that's the only advice I have for that because we didn't do very well on staying on budget at all. It just gets out of hand very quickly. Well, and there's a lot of things that you forget too. Like we were budgeting and then you completely forgot about hair and makeup. I did. And and a photographer and there's seven grand right there. Yeah. And everything wedding related is more expensive than anything normal. The minute like a DJ quote can be $500 for a regular party. And then for the same amount of time, but you put the word wedding at a thousand dollars easily like everything the minute you put wedding in front of it is just astronomical and i didn't know that about the wedding industry until i got into it Mm -hmm. and i was like so this is where i should start business (laughs) because this is phenomenal over here like Mm -hmm. the price of all of it's just crazy but i mean the price of everything nowadays is too so you want a photographer for a party 1500 bucks you want a wedding photographer four grand yeah literally oh so that's intense yeah Mm -hmm. so one like one last question and then we'll kind of close it out um do you feel like you guys have planned your wedding for you or do you feel like you've planned your wedding for you and then a lot geared towards your guests no this was for mm-hmm. us 100 percent was like nope this is what we want Okay. I mean, I had the wedding cork board for the longest in the old place, Mm -hmm. you know, and it had all of the ideas from my Pinterest and stuff, and none of that really changed when, you know, if anyone gave opinions or anything, or, yeah, we didn't really plan for them. We, like, did it for us and Mm -hmm. what we wanted, and, I mean, it's really Christmassy themed because I love Christmas, so Mm -hmm. we really did it for, like, us, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, really, I mean... No one's opinion really came in Mm-mm. in like and deciding a lot of. I mean, some things I'm sure we like took I mean, like for decor and like stuff, but like the whole sure. thought of it or like the whole fact of it, the whole idea being where it ours. is and yeah, like okay, why yeah, everything fair. is. There are some things that I feel like they're just people give an idea and then you end up liking it. Mm-hmm. Like you gave an idea when we were at City Sailor of the guest list and how mm-hmm. they had their wines and you were like that would be really cool and I was like oh my god yeah I took a picture and now it's something we're thinking of mm-hmm. but I would say that was more of just like someone thought something was cool and we were like oh no that is cool I wouldn't have thought of it like that like mm-hmm. not really you weren't like you should do this and then we were like oh yeah we hate that but we're gonna do it because she thought it was ne-. like you know what mm-hmm. I mean it yeah. was very much our own there's nothing like at the end of the day that you'll be like oh I shouldn't have done this I shouldn't yeah. have listened I to someone so yeah. It's all think very so. much geared towards what you guys want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I no, think we've I've... pretty much done everything for us mm-hmm. for the wedding. Yeah. I mean, we've listened to people, but we still did what we wanted. Yeah. Generally. Take it, everyone's advice with a grain of salt. <laughs> do you guys feel you can do. like, do you feel like that's like how weddings should be planned? Mm-hmm. Like a hundred percent? I a hundred percent agree. It should be you and your partner's idea because you're going to have those regrets if i've seen a lot on tiktok too of like things i regretted at my wedding and i'm like did you think of that or did someone else think of it because sometimes it's little things like couldn't afford a videographer like okay that's fair they're Mm -hmm. absolutely insane like we can't afford one either but i don't think it would be a regret but like i've seen ones that are just random and i'm like well why didn't you do it like wonder who told you not to or something like that like i think if we listened i would then be like oh that one time so-and-so told me not to do this at my wedding and it's all I think about Mm -hmm. because like you forget sometimes happy things you always remember the bad things yeah for sure I think a wedding should 100% be you and your partners Mm -hmm. and if someone doesn't like it you don't have to come it's not your day yeah like it's the same as when they say like you know like when people get upset about like people being excited about their wedding it's like it's your day though Mm -hmm. it's yours it's all about you it's it's like oh that's true it doesn't matter if someone thinks your dress isn't cute or your decorations aren't cute or i mean the amount of times we've heard you're really having it outside you can't have it inside no unless it's blizzarding outside no like yeah so i just feel like because you'll regret it in the end 
and you shouldn't regret your wedding day like at all it's supposed to be the happiest day ever like yeah you don't want to regret that you're getting to maddie like the love of your life that should be so happy yeah i agree with you on that one who's that <laughs> Peach. Peachy pie. Yes, thank you. It's Peach. Thank you, Peach. It's Peach. It's peach. Like, okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Oh, good boy. Come. Come. You're going to have peach noises all up on this podcast. It's fine. Is there anything that, like, any suggestions or anything like that? <laughs> In the tea. <laughs> really spilling the tea over here um that you guys have for any couples anybody thinking about getting engaged or married or anything like that before we do it i mean yeah advice wise <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay advice wise i don't know don't let people's negative opinions okay, affect you like if i know it's better said than done mm-hmm. or easier said than done i'm sorry but try your best not to and i don't know just whatever you want to do is what you want to do like yeah. don't really try if, unless you have to obviously make sacrifices for money or whatever the reason may be but try not to as much as you can like just and i don't know it's going to be stressful you're not going to love any part of it they lie to you in the movies it's not fun it's never fun i don't know there are some things that are fun sure like i don't know touring the venue was fun picking the venue was fun the tasting was the fun. Tasting was fun. I feel like a wedding is very sim, like symbolic of life. Like you have to go through all of this hard stuff to have like something beautiful yeah. come out of it. So watching. I feel like after outside, planning this and doing this, we can sh- fucking do anything. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I feel like <laughs> it's a relationship test for sure. And when we first started, I was like, "Wow, I understand why people call off engagements because it is a lot. And if your relationship can't handle it, it's not a bad thing. Sometimes you're just maybe not ready for all of that pressure, but like." I mean, we're it like, we're not sure going to call off, test, like, yeah, we were like, we're not going to call off the engagement, but like, mm-hmm. we'll just go and get married instead because it just wasn't worth it. Mm-hmm. Like, but I understand why people are like, I don't even want, no, I don't want to deal with this right now. Yeah. So I, I, it's a lot of stress for sure. And it's way more stressful than you would ever imagine. I feel like because it's like, it's supposed to be happy and yeah, they're happy moments, but it's also stressful because planning and pe- you have to make every decision and I am indecisive. You have to make every single decision yourself. You can't ask, what do you think? Well, besides your partner, but like some things you have to do yourself. Like I had to pick my own makeup and hair. (laughs) I couldn't be like, what do you think on that one? Like that's, you have to make decisions, but. Also things you don't think about too. It's like when you go to a wedding, you're there like as a guest, Mm -hmm. you know, you see everything. You're like, oh, this is so nice. This, that, you don't think, you don't realize that every single thing that is happening the bride and groom planned it. And For months, usually. Like, every song... Well, the DJs pick the songs, but you tell them what kind of songs you want. Mm-hmm. Some DJs who's have you make a playlist. Who's walking into what then. songs, who, like... Which, the order. Who's leaves the aisle in what order? Are the bride and the groom exiting them? Are they exiting by rows? What music's playing on exit? Do you have a master and mistress of ceremony? I that... Think. A what? What is that? Yeah, Exactly. We don't have one. It's basically like a master would be a groomsman, a mistress would be a bridesmaid, and it's they would be like your wedding coordinator, basically. That sounds very um, like yeah. that shouldn't be a part of a marriage at all. So. Yeah, your master and your mistress. Yeah. So, so that's very 1920s of them. I don't yeah, like it. Yeah, but that's basically what it is. We do not have one, obviously. We have a wedding coordinator instead. But, but yeah. every single like, thing at yeah, a wedding is planned. It's all it's... pre-planned, months in advance. What gets me is like thinking about it like you walk in and, you know, listening to you guys talk about it. Like it's all the way down to the silverware, mm-hmm. the napkins. The, the fold of your napkin? Mm-hmm. The color? French pleat, baby. Yeah, he, I, that was his decision 100%. He's like, what kind of napkins? And I was like, I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever you want. The chairs, do you want padded? Do you want like clear acrylic? I'm like, that looks uncomfortable. What kind of tables? Do you want rectangle? Do you want regular length linens or floor length? Do you want a sweetheart table? A head table or a king's I'm table? I'm eloping. I'm eloping. Do you want wooden chairs outside? Do you want padded chairs outside? Do you want them white? Do you want them silver? Do you want ice cold water whilst it's snowing? <laughs> Oh, yeah, these are the options. Can I get hot tea, please? <laughs> Ice cold bucket of like these are the options. Like you're like reading it and you're like, oh, does your DJ have a microphone? I would sure hope so. But is that a question <laughs> on the wedding worksheet? Yes. Oh, yeah. just that's intense. Well, and then everything. It, then it's also like for 
because we're doing assigned seating mm -hmm. and we have to make a seating chart. That can't be done okay. to the last minute. That's also the other thing. That can't be done to the last minute, but you have to have your seating chart. Whatever you put it on, whether it's acrylic, we're doing a mirror. I don't Is there know a mirror? I don't, I don't know. know. Exactly. Um, we don't have it. You have to make that, but then you have to make your table markers so people know which table they're at, but then you have to put their names on something at each individual seat so they know where they sit. But because the, then when you have a plated meal, you also have to put on their thing. Are they having the chicken or are they having the fish? Next to their name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I find that out, too. So you have to yeah. make so it. So you now have three different just things. Put a just a chicken emoji <laughs> or a fish. That's exactly what's happening. Like, 100%. <laughs> I, I am pressing it on the cricket yes. and it will be. Yeah. So now there's three different types of signage that we need just to tell just people where to, to sit. Don't forget about the rehearsal dinner. That in itself is a whole pre-planned party tour the day before. I forgot about that. <laughs> you need your wedding coordinator there for that too, in case you didn't know. Because she coordinates the whole wedding, so she has to be the rehearsal. It's an extra fee. It is. You also can have your photographer there if you want to. Also an extra fee. But then you got to get fit for that. And I'm people curling up in a ball. Wouldn't even want to go to RSVPs. Oh, trying to get people to RSVP at your wedding. I never uh, thought it would be another, so difficult. They still have another. Two months. We have people month. who have booked flights and booked hotel rooms and are like, well, you know I'm coming. What do you want to eat? You want to starve? Okay. Hector. At Hector Garcia yesterday. <laughs> well, you know I'm coming. Okay. What do you want to eat, Hector? <laughs> what do you mean? He going to eat D's. Oh, no. I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. one more thing that came up, kind of like popped into my head. And this is for also people that are like thinking about relationships, talking. I know in the beginning, I mean, every relationship has their things, right? Is there anything, like, any advice that you would give to people that are, like, hearing outside of their relationship? Like, you shouldn't be with this person. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Even though you have that feeling that you're like, this is 100% my person. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been there. I think it depends on who it is that's coming to you mm -hmm. and like how they're saying it. Can't, like, are they actually worried about you? Like, are they like, are they checking up? Like, are you okay? Is everything okay in your relationship? Like, you don't seem happy or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, is it a rough patch or is it just whatever? Or are they coming like, you shouldn't be with this person, you should break up with them, and they can't give like, are not given valid reasons then mm -hmm. i wouldn't listen to it like if they're just like they're not a nice person like okay well they're nice to me like you know i mean mm -hmm. like that's not a valid reason but if it's like oh well i don't know like whatever it may be like oh you guys always seem to be arguing or there's always a fight you don't really seem happy like then i feel like it you'd have to look at it more i wouldn't 100 percent say listen to them mm -hmm. fully i feel like you should look at the relationship maybe and try and look at it from the outside and be like do we do that? But I, like, take it with a grain of salt, I mm -hmm. feel like. Because sometimes it's meant helpfully, but you're never going to see it. Or they're, it. like, checking in. Yeah, you're see. also never going to see it when you're in it. So I feel like it's kind of like a, like, a, as bad as it is, it's sometimes you just have to go through it and mm -hmm. find out in the end, like, you were right. And it doesn't help to have friends or family telling you, you need to leave them their shit like that doesn't help out yeah. because it makes you be like no they're not that's no no like you put mm -hmm. up blockers mm -hmm. so i feel like it depends on who if it's someone you're very very close with and they're just like look i don't think this is okay mm -hmm. then like okay maybe you should look at it but if it's someone that just doesn't like the person or whatever then i i mean i wouldn't really listen to it wholeheartedly anyway yeah i think some sometimes the reason I asked is I've been there mm -hmm. and I know you've been there past relationships mm -hmm. but now looking at your relationship with Matt like you've definitely heard from people like why are you with him mm -hmm. probably more early on and you've probably gotten the same thing like not in that like kind of direct way mm -hmm. yeah. but like people are always like why are you guys together how did that happen or like whatever and I feel like a lot of times you take a lot of that stuff to heart and mm -hmm. like you do when you're fresh into something like yeah you second think guess. about what it is for sure instead of just like listening to yourself and kind of going I through think it that is the most important part like listen to what you mm -hmm. think like because you don't want to get in your own head that's the worst thing ever but 
I mean, yeah, like, sometimes maybe they are right, but I just think it's sometimes something you have to experience. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe they are really bad and you can't see it because you are literally love blind, but sometimes you just have to go through mm-hmm. a nasty breakup or whatever, and yet it sucks, but, like, then you'll look back and be like, damn, I was an idiot. That was really happening. I said it was okay. Like, it just... Yeah. Like, it happens, and people pushing you and saying you shouldn't be with them, or they're, like... Plus, no one knows your relationship. No one knows you guys when you're alone. Nobody sees what goes on behind closed doors. Like, it's very... I don't know. I just... Okay. Like, I feel like you can't... I, I feel like... Say someone not to be with them. I feel like <clears throat> with a lot of relationships, if you listen to people, I think a lot of it will come from, like, jealousy or, like, you know, you're, you don't want life to change. No one mm-hmm. likes change, No, ever. absolutely not. So, I feel like in those terms, like sometimes when you hear people saying those things that they don't necessarily Mm. come from a place of like they really truly feel like you shouldn't be with someone or do something it doesn't always have to pertain to a relationship but Mm -hmm. it's also out of like nervous like if you're changing your career and people are like don't do it they're sometimes they're not saying don't do it because they don't want you to do it they're like oh my gosh don't that get sounds, hurt it sounds scary yeah. yeah like this is scary like i wouldn't you know or like them well, and coming especially from that if aspect. it's a long-term relationship if you guys have been together for six seven years and you're like just sometimes it doesn't work out like that mm-hmm. and then if some but then when someone else starts telling you it's like no it does work or you're like yeah i know but i it's been so long like this that and the other like i feel like it's just you get in your own head, and it's yeah. not helpful. Have you ever been in that situation, Matt, where you're, like, getting outside opinions from people on your relationship? Do you listen to them? Generally, I mean, that generally happens, like, early on. But, yeah. like, I've had it happen, but I don't listen. I still don't listen. I generally don't listen to, like, anything. You're getting married, so congratulations for not listening. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean... I'll, like, listen, Mm -hmm. but I won't... Do anything with it? No. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's, like... Like like you said, unless they have, like, a valid reason, they're like, hey... Like, if they're coming just because they're concerned about you, and maybe you'll be like, oh, well... Oh, no, that's not what it was. It was yeah. blah, blah, blah. And Someone might like, have misinterpreted oh, yeah. something that happened but, like, or what I they just, think they saw. I just but... feel like when people, like, attack, one, you could get defensive, mm-hmm. and then it would just make it worse if there was something wrong, or two, you'll get in your own head, and then a perfectly good relationship could just be thrown away because people don't know what happens when you're not around everybody. Like yeah. some people, Or yeah. you have the people that get off on destroying people's relationships. You know, some people love that, but that's high school drama, I feel mm-hmm. like. I mean, probably not. High school it's drama. It's definitely was. still a thing. Yeah, yeah. probably. It I, literally I, happened to us. Remember? Yeah. For like the first year of our relationship. That's why I kind yeah. of like brought it up because I feel like you guys definitely heard like from the beginning a lot of different things on like perspectives. Yeah. Of, yeah. Excuse me. Of your relationship and what you should do with it and how you should react to certain things or be around certain people yeah. or the fact that people would be like stop going to those places stop doing this you're provoking you're doing mm-hmm. this you're doing that when i don't necessarily think that that's fair yeah like i think that no yeah with every relationship with anybody it should be like a hundred percent about you two and not anyone else's everything else that you've been through in your entire life like not everything else you've been through because that makes you a person but you don't need to be reminded of your past following you yeah. through everything especially mm-hmm. in a new relationship like it doesn't yeah it doesn't need to be a thing mm-hmm. it doesn't, and it doesn't need to be like thrown in your face almost that does feel very high school yeah. like it shouldn't be kept brought up yeah. you know like like continuously let something happened it's okay and we kind of move from we there. moved on it's yeah it took a lot of, I can imagine it took a lot of work to get past some of those speed bumps. I mean, it was hard. Yeah. I mean, there were some things that, like, you know, stuck out there was that just, we like, thought. like, so much unnecessary There was a bullshit. lot of, yeah, and there were some things that, you know, we let affect us, but that's just, you're human, it happens. Mm-hmm. You can't, your feelings get hurt or whatever, but, like, I just, especially as a new couple, because you don't yeah. know, like, can I bring that up, or is that sensitive, or whatever, and you don't know what each other's past fully yet. So I yeah. feel like it's difficult. And then we got to a point where we're just like, 
Fuck it. Well, then we had a lot of conversations yeah. because we were. I was like, well, this, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, well, I didn't like that either. And then we spoke about what happened. And then we came mm-hmm. to, okay, well, this is how we're going to handle it from now on. Because it's not like a million people against. It's like it's us. And then it's whatever they want to do. Like, mm-hmm. it's just that's. You Have wanted- you guys had to remove yourselves from anybody, like, dealing with those things? What do you mean? Like, like has there have there been people that you've had to separate yourself from to protect your relationship or to protect your sanity really um there were there were one of our friends that you had to just stop talking to but you weren't super close you just like didn't talk to him anymore there were some but they have removed themselves from my life yeah there's like a couple that you were friends with but they turned out to not be true friends so you just oh shit oh we're talking about them there's like 12 of those no i was talking about certain someone else oh i know who you're talking about yeah but um i never had to really remove anybody from my life but i did have to like have a conversation with some people and be like look we don't care don't yeah. bring it up. Don't mention it. Don't tell me. If you see them, I don't care. Good for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't talk to them, but, like, if you do it, please don't tell me. Don't even tell me you bumped it. Like, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily get, like, have to stop talking to people, but I did have to tell some people, like, please don't. Like, yeah. I would prefer to just not. Putting you, those boundaries Yeah, up. you had to do that with a couple people, but just mm-hmm. a couple of yours ended up just kind of, like disappear yeah they just when they kind of saw that it wasn't working or doing anything Mm -hmm. they just kind of stopped anyway and you did tell a couple people like i don't care stop like it is what it is and some of them got the hint some of them just left like you just don't take offense to it because you just don't want to deal with it yeah you have the ones that provoke it too they get they yeah like you said they find it funny did you see or they send it to you and you're like i didn't want to see that thank you oh heck no yeah Mm -mm. oh yeah Mm mm-hmm so. I used to get phone calls. That's not your friend. No. That's what I was. That's yeah, exactly. who I was talking about. Uh, we got a phone call one night about it, and I was like, "That's not your friend. You take them off, mm-hmm. right? Like that? No, yeah. no. Someone that's constantly remind you of, but then would like of mistakes. would call me. Hey, did you see what she posted on her story? No. Oh well, she's talking shit about you, and then the following night is with her, mm-hmm. and I'm like. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> like, also, what up? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, were you talking like, shit too? Yeah. I'm just like, okay. Those are the people that were looking. They're, they're like that third party. They're the stir the pot people. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They were looking to get a reaction out of you to go and back to so them the and be people. like, oh, well, they're pissed or they said to get them. under yeah. their, your skin or whatever. To Let them know back. like, oh, I pissed them off or, yeah. oh, I did something. Yeah. It's like, ooh. Oh we're not in we're not in high school yeah. anymore people let's not do that no one cares no one cares <laughs> nobody cares <laughs> no, one, no one cares no one cares <laughs> what is that from i don't know no i thought it was from something and i didn't get it you know i always do that with you too american references <laughs> Ooh, a dandelion <laughs> must be the last one in the season <laughs> home <laughs> what movie is that from i don't know are you f- Freaky kidding me right now? Say it again. No. Okay. I don't know. What? What movie? It's a really big movie. What movie? Like 2000. Is it animated? Yes. Yes. I got animated by from your voice. Yes. It's animals. It is animals. And it's a dandelion? Ice animals. Ice age? As you say in his... (laughs) Ice (laughs) age? It's sloth? The sloth? What's his name? What's his name? His eyes. It is Sloth, is it not? He is a Sloth. He's a Sloth. His name is not Sloth. <laughs> his name is Shid. No, so it is. <laughs> Shid the Sloth. <laughs> they do this every year. <laughs> it's okay. I still love you. How are you doing on Spongebob? She We're on, on season s- three. She did watch it. That's a rule. They're not allowed to get married until they're Season Sponge three. Bob. I'm just going to, like, cancel my flight to the wedding if she doesn't I already paid Sponge for Bob. it. I, girl, I'll rebook somewhere. Where am I going? Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> not for that cheese. She's on the episode where Plankton owns the Krusty Krab. No, and I just got like, past I don't that. want it. I just got it past that. It's a pizza for you and me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're heading to Lululand. 
Girl, I've been in Duluth. Oh, land. okay. Thanks for the interview. This was fun. We should do it again. I gotta get another microphone though. Yeah. It'll be more fun. I feel Imagine like we should. All of us. I feel Hector like. This. No, that's what I was gonna say. I feel like I need to get more microphones because Can we, we need before your wedding. Oh, absolutely. Like the night before. She's like freaking out. Do about a podcast those. Wait, look, the night she's before and freaking the out about those lines. Look get at her. it, Peach. Peaches, get it. What is it? Get it, Peaches. She's freaking out. Anyway, we should definitely do that before the wedding. My dog is freaking out about the voice on my computer, beep, but it's fine. Beep, 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 beep. The voice lines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for listening to another episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and you know, we'll see you next Friday. Bye, honeys.